Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. With all praises, God is so good. That's right. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord to worship, and our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. To you, our visitors, family, and friends, it is a blessing to have you come out this yes. morning to worship with us here at One Way Assembly. We sincerely pray that you find the occasion to come again and worship with us. And I pray also that this day you will take something away that will encourage and uplift your soul. Amen. For those that had a birthday between last Sunday and today, please stand if you had a birthday between last Sunday. Amen. To God be the glory. And I would like to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. So we know that God is good. He's able to take care of all our burdens. Amen. And we just have to put them in his hands. Amen. But he said, cast all your cares upon me. That's it. But he shall help you. Amen. He said, I will never leave nor forsake. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise it. Amen. Make a joke for noise. That's it. Uh,
good to see each and every one of you. Want to welcome be here. all Amen. of you to One Way Assembly where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man Amen. Come Amen. Up unto the Father, except he be drawn by him. It is truly a blessing that God has drawn Amen. each and every one of you on Zoom. He has Amen. drawn each and every one of you on social media. He has drawn many of you in this sanctuary today. Amen. To God be the glory. I'm just excited always Amen. to be here with you. Amen. Amen. Today is a very special day. And today is Father's Day. So I would like to wish each and every one of our fathers in the room, those of you on Zoom, Amen. those of you on social media, and let's just let all fathers stand today to give you some praise. Awesome, awesome. So I'm just so again excited and delighted to be in this place with each and every one of you. Amen. God is doing some great things in my life, and I'm quite sure He's doing some awesome things in yours as well. Yes. But Thank you, Lord. To God be the glory. We have a lot in store for us today. And I'm just always thankful yes. to be in God's presence with all of you. Because He said, Where would you be together? Amen. Touching right. and agreeing, he's in the midst with us. So Amen. we thank Jehovah Shema for yes. being with us. Well, we have some good things in store on today. And we already know we have our messenger moment minute. Yes. These are good things because sometimes you may need a little bit of encouragement. You may need a little something to help you along the way because you have a rough week. And guess what? Yes. There's Amen. another one. Yeah. Here we go. So it's good for you to be present with us, and we're yeah. going to allow our own sister Brenda to come Amen. help us. Amen. 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 Our Father and Son, Jesus Christ, all also giving praises to our pastor and teacher, Marvin Sasser. Amen. I'm going to read from the Daily Word for Sunday, June 16, 2024, Father's Blessing. I bless my father with loving thoughts of gratitude. Today I bless my father and the father figures I have known with, love, with thoughts of love and appreciation. The man I call Father Mayor may or may not be related to me, but he has touched my life with love. Come on, All right. I give thanks for those fatherly figures who selflessly gave their time and love to me to grow into the person I am today. Yeah. That the demonstrations of patience showed me how to give other spaces and time. Their humor and light-heartedness taught me to not take myself too seriously. Their guidance and trust encouraged me to be independent and trust myself. I would not be the person I am today without the lessons of love and wisdom shared by my father. In so many ways, he gave me a strong foundation, foundation of which I built my life. Amen. I am grateful and blessed with all he has given me. Yes. Honor your fathers with Matthew 15 and 14. Yes. Today's message is honor thy father, Matthew 15 and 14. God commands us to honor our father and mother. Yes. I had an earthly father. His name was Avis McGaffey. He was my provider, protector, and comforter. He made sure I had everything. But we also have a heavenly father. Amen. He is our provider, Genesis 22, 14, our shelter, Joel 3.16, counselor, Isaiah 9.6. Amen. Our heavenly father makes sure we have everything we need. Yes. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He is our everlasting Father, Isaiah 60, 20. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. And also to the mothers who stand for oh, yeah. Thank oh, you. Amen. Let's stand. Amen. 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 Praise God Amen. for that. And we thank you so much, Sister Brenda, for highlighting how your father was an amazing pro protector, provider. Yes. yes. And plentiful in the bountiful of blessings to you. And we see how God mimics that to all of his children throughout 
is eternity. Yes. Well, I know one good thing. It's, it's so amazing to understand that we have a high father, Amen. Jehovah El Yon, the most high God. Yes. And I think it would be amiss if we would have something very special to highlight throughout the word of God. Uh -huh. Amen. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, Amen. how God has been the provider with a very unique explanation expounded upon to show us in God's word, his books from Genesis all the way to Revelation, 66 books, yeah. how he has been our provider. Yes, so what I'm going to do is ease myself out the way. And I'm going to have Sister Kimberly help us with that. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Yes. All right. So I want to share who God the Father, who art in heaven, was and still is from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Genesis, he is the breath of life. Yes. Exodus, the Passover lamb. Yes. Leviticus, the high priest. Yes. Right. Numbers, the fire by night. Yes. Deuteronomy, he's Israel's guide. Joshua, salvation's choice. Yes. Judges, Israel's guard. Yes. Ruth, the kinsman redeemer. Yes. yes. First and second Samuel, the trusted prophet. Yes. yes. First and second Kings and Chronicles, he is solid. Yes. yes. Ezra, the true and faithful scribe. Yes. Nehemiah, the one who reveals lies and walls. Yes. Esther, our courage. Job, the timeless redeemer. Yes. Psalms, our morning star. Yes. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, our wisdom. Yes. Amen. Ecclesiastes, a time and a season. Amen. Solomon, the lover's dream. Isaiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah, the Weeping Prophet. Yes. Lamentation, the Cry for Israel. Yes. Right. Ezekiel, the Cry from Sin. Yes. Daniel, the Stranger that will show up in your fire. Yes. Right. Hosea, Forever Faithful. Yes. Joel, the Spirit's Power. Yes. Amos, the Strong Arms that Carry. Right. Yes. Obadiah, the Lord our Savior. Jonah, the great missionary. Yes, sir. Yes. Micah, the promise of peace. Yes. yes. Nahum, our strength and shield. Yes. yes. Habakkuk and Zephaniah, yes. the one that brings revival. Yes. Haggai, he restores anything that has been lost. Yes. yes. Zechariah, our fountain. Yes. Malachi, the son of righteousness. Yes. yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not just God, he's yes. the Messiah. Yes. <laughs> Acts, the reigning fire from heaven. Yes. Romans, the grace of God. Yes. First and second chronicles, the power of love. Yes. Right. Galatians, freedom from curse of sin. Yes. Ephesians, our glorious treasure. Yes. Philippians, the servant's heart. Yes. Colossians, God and the Trinity. Yes. First and second Thessalonians, our calling king. Yes. yes. Amen. First and second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon yes. are mediator and faithful pastor. Yes. Right. Hebrews, the everlasting courage. Yes. James, the one that will heal. Yes. Heal you. First and second Peter, our faithful shepherd. Yes. yes. First, second, and third John and you, the lover coming for Amen. his bride. Amen. And Revelation. He was, is, and always will be the first, last, the beginning, and the end. Amen. God the Father. Amen. 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 Well, wow. All right. That was truly a blessing. Amen. All 66 books expounded on how God 
shows up in every unique way. Amen. Yeah. Amen. From Genesis all the way to Revelation as our Father. That was great. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. We thank you so much for being attentive as we made it through those little appetizers. Now, I guess it's really time for the word. Amen. 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 To be served. Amen. To God be the glory again. Thanks, Sister Brenda, Sister Kimberly, for Amen. helping Amen. us get going Amen. this morning. Thank all you. Right, all right. Well, what I'm going to do is provide us with a word of prayer, and then we're going to look at this particular passage in the Old Testament. Let's see. Just want to make sure this is. Um, let's try that transition. Testing one, two. Can everybody hear me pretty good? Yeah. All right. I think we are ready to go then. So again, I want to welcome you all Amen. as we get ready to receive a good word for our fathers. And there's something in us for all of us. Amen. Amen. And what I like about this passage, this is pretty much a continuation from Mother's Day. All right. Does anyone remember the passage that we talked about on Mother's Day? Well, it's found in the book of Exodus this morning, chapter 20. Verse 12. That's why I'm going to be looking at. Amen. Because on Mother's Day, we dealt with a Mother's Day message to encourage our mothers. Well, on today, we're going to use this same passage to edify and encourage every father today. Amen. Amen. So again, we are in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Verse 12, and as you find your way to that passage, it shouldn't be that hard to find because it is the second book in the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. As we find our way to that passage, I'm going to provide us with a word of prayer. Let us look to the Lord. Dear Father God, we come before your presence on this day because you have been our Father for centuries. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Decades. Thank you. Thank you. In every moment of our lives and those who went on to glory. Yes. But Father, this morning we thank you for allowing us to thank awaken you. to another beautiful and glorious yes, day. Lord. Amen. Yes. We thank you so much for your traveling grace yes. that has allowed us to arrive safe and sound to this place. Yes. And we thank you for your people who are on Zoom, and we thank you for your people on social media. Yes, Lord. And those in this sanctuary. Lord, we just come asking forgiveness for all of our sins and all of our transgressions this morning. Yes, Fill us with your word. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, we need you to usher your spirit into this place to illuminate, show us, and guide us in your holy and divine word. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you because we cannot do nothing without you. Amen. And Lord, we need thee every hour. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day as we're going to honor our fathers yes. as you've been a great father to us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, if we continue to walk in your footsteps, we can lead a family, yes, a sir. friend, Amen. and a generation the yes, way sir. we should go. But Lord, last but not least, let the words of my mouth in the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We ask these blessings in the matchless priceless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Some praise. Amen. 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 So again, it's good to see all of you. want to welcome every father in the house and Happy Father's Day to you. Yes. Again, and it's good to see each and every one of you with us today. Amen. As we are looking in the book of Exodus today, an Old Testament passage, this context is where the actual Ten Commandments was given to Moses from God at Mount Sinai. Amen. And we are really particularly looking at one of the commandments. Yes. One of the ten. And we will be looking at verse 12 today. So let us look at this particular passage here. 
And it reads as follows. You must honor and respect your father and your mother. Do this so that you will have a full life in the land and the Lord your God gives you. Amen. Amen. Good, good. There's so much said there because we actually have two sections to this. The first section says, you must honor and respect your father. Yes. Well, today is Father's Day. Yes. Yeah. But on Mother's Day, we caption the latter section of verse 12, where it says, you must honor and respect your father and your mother. Amen. Right. Amen. But this is done because there's a prerequisite to this. If you do this, God says, you will have many days upon the earth. Right. Amen. And unfortunately, in today's society, we see a lot of youth in this generation yeah. leaving here. Amen. So this sounds like there hasn't been proper training. There hasn't been proper teaching. There hasn't been proper modeling of this commandment being explained to our children. But on today, we will dive a little deeper into what is explained in the text here because in section A of verse 12, we will be looking at where it says, you must honor and respect your father and your mother. Amen. Well, for a brief moment today, I really would love to explain to you I really would love to show you something. I really would like to talk about, to reveal, edify, and show you something. And I really need to explain and expound and preach, teach a message entitled The Foundation of the Fifth Commandment. Let me say that again. The title of this message today is The Foundation of the Fifth Commandment. As you see in front of us, we have a slight little snippet when God had carved all ten commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai on two stone tablets. And we find that this fifth commandment actually leads us to the horizontal perspective of the rest of the commandments. Yes. Because what is so interesting is that the first four are vertical. And the last six are horizontal. But God was always wanting his people to be led by him to understand him Amen. and to be guided by him. Amen. And in today's society, we see that this generation is running wild. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call it Generation Y or they call it Generation X. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a new thing called millennials. Millennium. But as they say, they don't make them like they used to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. They talk about parents. Oh, they don't make them like they lose, used to. Uh -uh. When we talk about historical antique cars, they were much stronger. They were much durable. They were much heavy. All these paper mache cars today, you get into an accident, your car may be in bad shape than you are. So what's your protection? Well, it's the same way with our lives. Yeah. If you don't have a fortified foundation in the word of God, you will find yourself in many accidents yes. where you will not be able to come back from. Yes. And that's why we need God's word in our life. Yes. We need his precepts. We need his directions. Amen. And we must honor thy father Amen. and thy mother. Right. And that's your days will be long upon the land. Amen. And what I'm really excited about today 
Today, we are basically gathered here this morning to celebrate a promise so profound, a promise so pure, yes, a promise so enduring that it echoes throughout eternity. Yes. The leadership and guidance concerning a daughter or a son honoring their father. Yes. Right. Right. As we honor the essence of fatherhood today, yes. let us reach into the depths of this sacred relationship. Amen. Reflecting on its significance, its challenges, and its eternal love. Yes. You see, the role of a father is the expression of sacrifice and leadership. Yes. A pure, selfless love that begins even before we're born. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. As you continue this honorable journey, I may add, remember that you're not alone. Right. Amen. The Lord is your constant companion. Amen. He's providing you with wisdom Amen. and strength. As it is said in Proverbs 22 and 6. Amen. Encourages us what? To train up a child in the way he should go. Amen. And when he is old, he will not depart from Amen. it. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. a good word from Solomon that he's saying that we should train up our children. Amen. At the youngest state. Because sometimes you may wait too late. Okay, now. And try to tell your adult son or daughter that you need to get this done. Uh -huh. Or get that done. No, 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 no. That's why we have a lot of these little Johnnies and little Janets acting up in the store. Okay. Because nobody has not put the rod to them. No one has put the belt to them. Because discipline is key. Amen. 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 Do y'all know some adults that spoil? Y'all yeah. uh, okay. know some spoiled brats? Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because we need some proper training. Now, even as adults. Yeah. I know some folk that still ain't been trained. Okay. Now. Wow. They might think they own a train, but they need to be trained up. Amen. Yes. In the Lord's ways. Amen. And to understand that God has called all of us to do something. Amen. Amen. But until you train up yourself. See, you must train up yourself before you can train up somebody else. Amen. Amen. Because when he says train up a child, what about that adult being trained up? That's true. Amen. But there's a domino effect when Amen. you watch it closely. Because if your parent trains you. That sounds like their parent trained them. Amen. And if you can rewind the course of time, your ancestors told their ancestors to make sure that the word of God stays foundational Amen. in this family Amen. so it will not depart from it. Amen. Amen. Because if you look around, you can see the, the families that are Amen. forsaken and turn their back on God already. All right. All you right. can see it. You can see it in the grandchildren. All right. Now, watch that. Close. Amen. Watch the grandchildren. Amen. Right? Now. Then you can see the children. Mm -hmm. Then you can see the adult parent. Right. Amen. We see something is mislabeled, something is misgone and misguided. Yes. But as you understand your influence That's true. and guidance leaves a permanent mark on your children. Amen. Now. It's right. dangerous if a parent doesn't have any influence. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, Thank it's you. a mess if you just got the flu. But if you don't have an influence, okay. oh, you're going to see a bad cold in your family. Okay, now. Shaping their future and their faith, you got to start this early. Amen. Without your influence, that's why they get so easily influenced by their peers, by their pressures, and their social media presence. Amen. Right. Amen. That's what's happening out here. It's so much influence easily because we're dealing with a new day. Yeah. Sure. We have this thing called social media, mm. cell phones, tablets, that's capturing their minds already. Sure. So much is going through there, you don't even need to know, even know what's going on. You need to monitor what your grandchildren are getting into. You Amen. need to monitor your children, Amen. what they're getting into. Amen. Did you know the word father and dad are often used interchangeably? 
Okay. Let me say that again. Did you know the word father and dad are often used interchangeably? Mm -hmm. But they can carry different meanings All right. that highlight distinct aspects as a parental role. Here are some hidden differences. Well, let's look at number one. Biological versus emotional connection. Well, in the father sense, typically refers to the biological or legal relationship. It's more formal and it acknowledges the role of a male parent in the creation or legal responsibility of a child. Now, on the contrary, looking at the dad perspective role in the biological and emotional connection, it implies a deeper emotional bond All right. and active involvement in a child's life. Yes, yes. It's more informal and affectionate, highlighting a nurturing, caring relationship. Yes. So you see the difference right there with the biological and the emotional attachment. Yes. Just being called a father, but are you a dad? All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're going to break some things down today because just because you was involved in providing the seed, that means much more to it. You have to be present. Yeah. Amen. To make sure this seed is nurtured, Amen. it's grown, it's watered, yes. to reach its full potential. Yes. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the word father and dad are interchangeable. Okay. We just looked at the biological versus emotional connection. Well, oh, what about this one? Role versus relationship. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, the father can be seen as the role or title given to a male parent. Amen. It focuses on the position and responsibilities that come with being a parent. Yeah. Well, how do we relate that to the dad? The dad emphasizes the relationship and a day-to-day -day interactions yes. with love and support provided to the child, it's about being present and engaged. Yes. You see that? You have to make sure you're doing more than just being the father. You have to be both roles, not a versus, because just because you are there, that don't mean you're there. Okay. Because if you notice the word father, you have the word far <laughs> in father. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, are you far away from being a father? Uh-huh. Well, that was the role versus relationship. Well, what about number three? Cultural and social perceptions. Well, regarding the father, sometimes associated with authority, discipline, and provision. And it can carry a sense of duty and obligation. Well, what about the dad role then? It implies warmth, playfulness, and a more approachable figure. Yeah. It suggests a partnership and friendship with the child. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Did you not know some children are afraid mm -hmm. of their fathers? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, we can hold that in regard as God being our father. We must fear him. That's right. But there has to be a sense of fear in a very loving way Amen. to the child. Yes. Yes. That the father can exemplify a sort of authority right, right. at moments and then have a stern rule of discipline -ship. Yeah. Right. That I mean what I mean, what I say, what I say. Yes, yes. Right. So we can understand there's a light switch to fatherhood, but I know sometimes we keep the lights off. <laughs> okay. A lot. And you have to know when to turn on love. Amen. You have to weigh it out. But guess where that comes from? Understanding who God is. All right. Amen. 
Because a father can think, I just want to exemplify and exploit my authority, but you're not showing any love. Okay. Right. That can be a problem too. Oh my goodness, number four. This is a good one right here. Presence versus involvement. In terms of a father with presence and involvement can be a father by virtue of the biological or just legal connection, regardless of involvement in a child's life. But what about the dad then in the presence of involvement? This implies an active presence involvement, an emotional investment yes. in the child's upbringing and daily life. Yes. It makes a difference. I mean, when I look at my life personally, my dad wasn't around, but I made it Amen. thus far. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I had to put in extra work. Hallelujah. That a child must need to understand if the father isn't around, you have to take some ownership to find out what a father is. Amen. Amen. Good, good. Amen. What he's supposed to do. Amen. And you can see the Amen. absence in your life it can make. All right. But as long as you have the word of God Amen. Yes. to understand right. what a father is Amen. Amen. and watch how God is. I never seen him, but he sure showed up. All right. Amen. Amen. Oh, I don't know if you call what I just said. Amen. God the Father, our Amen. Father right. who are in heaven. Right. I didn't see him, right. but his presence was shown on in my life. I know what I'm talking about Amen. right there. And this young lady sitting right here up front, right. Hallelujah. she showed us Amen. even if he wasn't around because she didn't bring no other man around us either. Hallelujah. Oh, I think I got a few minutes I can work with this for a minute. Hallelujah. It's all right if I testify for a minute. Oh, this young lady sitting right here, my mother, Hallelujah. she never brought another man around Thank us. You, Jesus. Oh, we didn't have to worry about phone ringing, mama going in another room trying to talk. We didn't have to worry about some strange man knocking at the door. We didn't see mama getting herself together to put on them dresses, some heels to go out. No, we didn't have to worry about our mother doing that. She made a sacrifice all by herself to raise all, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Happy Father's Day to you, too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Yeah, we got a lot of single parents out here. Thank you, Lord. And let me pull over for a minute. As a mother, you don't have to act manly. Right. You don't have to act like you a father. All right. You leave that up to God the Father. But let me tell you something. If a mother can show you Jesus, in a woman's body, oh, you got double duty, working double time and overtime. Let me show you something. She did it all by herself. All by herself. That's a sacrifice. You know what? It's okay, Mom, if I tell them your age. Go ahead. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. My mother is yeah. 85. Hallelujah. Lord be long, June 19th, she will be 86. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Thank you, too. Having went on a date. Hallelujah. Brought no man around Hallelujah. us. Hallelujah. But I know that's hard for some of these mothers today. <laughs> let me leave y'all alone. I'm just meddling. But let me tell you something. Presence is important. If a father is living today, yes, sir. make sure you make out and reach out yes, sir. to your children, whatever age they are, because yes, your presence is never too late Amen. to make a valuable impact Amen. in your son or daughter's life. Amen. You see, God entrusted you just as easy as it was to lay down, you can lay down his law. Amen. 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 You can lay down his laws too. Amen. That's what you got, and you must do it. Amen. Yes. yes. You see, in essence, 
While every dad is a father, yeah, yeah. not every father is necessarily a dad. Right. Oh, let me say that again for a minute. You see, while every dad is a father, not every father is necessarily a dad. All right, all right. Some people just like to be looked upon yeah. as a father. Some people yeah. just like to be called dad, but not doing neither one of these titles that are given. Yes. Yes. God grants you the privilege of fatherhood. Yes. But sometimes we get caught up in the neighborhood instead of being a real father in fatherhood. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we want to be in the hood, but we don't understand God wants you to exemplify Every point of fatherhood right. to your children. Amen. Now, and yes, your children do grow up, right? Yes, yes. They were infants. Yes. Then they were toddlers. Yes. yes. Then they were young kids. Yes. They became teenagers, young adults. Now they're adults. No yes. matter what age. Yes. You Amen. still your children. Yes. yes. It doesn't matter. Yes. Just because I'm at a certain age, that doesn't mean. I'm not still her child. That's yes, true. Lord. That's true. But yes, sometimes Lord. these children may act nah. a little grown. Uh huh. <laughs> and that's when they're 10 years old. They say, okay, you acting grown? Well, we're grounds with grown. Gone. No, not, not. When you're acting grown, you not. need to be gone then. Get out. What they say? Get out and stay out. That's it. Out. That's it. That's you want to act all like that just because you got your little Snapchat and stuff on your phone? You think you grow all of a sudden? Get out. Yes. yes. We think social media is raising our children. Yeah. Amen. Parents are not monitoring what their children are into and getting into. All right, now. We Amen. need to take back our children from social media. Yeah. All right, now. Because they are growing too fast, too much information, too much technology is being thrown their way, and you're gonna lose it before you lose it. Yeah. All right. And some haven't been either. Okay. Father or dad. Yeah. But just sperm donors. Right. Yeah, I said it. That's all you did. Yeah. And what was that? Okay. <laughs> You want to donate some, donate some blood too. All right. Okay. Let me y'all up. Okay. <laughs> Listen, being a dad is generally a means of going beyond the biological or legal definition and engaging in a meaningful, nurturing relationship with one's children. All right. 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 That's exactly what it is. Yes, sir. It's going beyond the title. God gave you a prerequisite in the fifth commandment. Amen. Yeah, yeah. What was today's message entitled what? The foundation, the foundation of the fifth commandment. The foundation of the fifth commandment. Yes. And does anyone know what the fifth commandment is? Yeah. We just yeah. read it. I'm just messing with y'all to see if y'all listening. It was the fifth commandment. And the fifth commandment is what? Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days be long upon earth. Amen. Yeah, see, I'm always trying to make sure no one has a little sleepy leapy in here. Amen. You see, if you've been, been here and been there, God, hopefully you got all your rest today. All right. We should be nodding off in here because if you go anywhere else, you got all your attention. Okay. Oh, if you can sit up in a movie for two or three hours and don't fall asleep, why do we get sleepy in God's eyes? All right. It's very interesting, but let me tell you something. Did you not know there's a scripture that talks about that? Oh, yes. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says that when there's a steadiness in the word of God, there's a weariness in the flesh. Yes, uh -huh. yes. So I don't want y'all to take this lightly. Anytime you're having trouble, I'm going to say this facetiously. Right, right. If you want to get some sleep, you don't need no melatonin. Uh -oh. You don't need anything else. You don't need a little sip. You don't need a little nip nip or nothing. You don't need to five nothing. Pick your Bible up. Amen. And watch you fall asleep. Because there's a steadiness when you pick up the Bible. It's something how your flesh gets weak and you get all sleepy all of a sudden. Isn't that strange? 
So I'm trying to help somebody out today. Fight the feeling and get into the word of God when you're not sleeping. Yeah. Stop using God's word and his services to take a nap in here. Let me leave y'all alone for somebody not all. Let's see. Well, guess what? Let's look into the context of Exodus chapter 20. Is that all right? You see, in verses chapter 1 through 17, in the book of Exodus, addresses the giving of the Ten Commandments. Yes, yes. Anybody remember the movie with Charleston Heston? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Play in the Ten Commandments. Yes. yes. Captioned in the location of Egypt. But you know what amazes me about MGM Studios? They didn't cast any black folk. Uh -huh. Carol probably didn't realize that, huh? We have an all-white cast in the land of Egypt. Y'all might get that tomorrow. Go read it and see it. But we find that the Ten Commandments was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Yes. And God at this time wanted to show man that if you wanted to serve me, I'm going to show you something written, yes. like a written contract. Yes. Did you not know there was no law given before Exodus 20, right? Mm -hmm. Man just did what he wanted to do, mm -hmm. and God would soon catch up with that person and check with them yes. to make sure we go get this thing right. Yes. But now God brings his law, and God couldn't write it on a piece of paper. Yes. Because there was no printers. Yes. There was no paper present. So God used the ink of lightning All right. to inscribe his law not on one tablet, but two stone tablets. Amen. Because the number two is the number of what? Witness. Witness. Amen. So it's interesting how God used the number two. He could have put all the commandments on one tablet, couldn't he? Being God. Yes. Yes. But he said, I'm going to give you one law and another law on two stone tablets to witness that I gave it to you. Yes, right. yes. So at this point, God uniquely puts the inscription of this fifth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days be long upon the Amen. Land. Amen. And in verses 18 through 26, addresses that the people are afraid of God. And I think that's a good thing. You better come before his presence with fear and trembling at all times. Amen. But they were afraid because this is something new. Yes. They haven't heard someone telling them, telling them that, hey, these are two stone tablets that I'm going to give to you that if you want to worship the Lord thy God, this is what his prerequisites are. Yes. you got to do this. Amen. And in Exodus 20, we now reach the climax of the entire book. Amen. Yeah. The central most exalted theme, all that came before being, it were a preparation for it. Amen. And all that follows as a result of the supplement of it. Yes, sir. Everything was all captioned in these ten stone laws yes. that God gave. Yes, sir. You see, the first four commandments are set forth the principles of Guiding Israel's relationship to Yahweh. Yes. The first four commandments are vertical. Does anyone know what the number four means? Hallelujah. See, I love asking questions because I've actually taught on these things. And I'm so much trying to always get rid of these gift cards. I've been trying to get rid of them for a couple of Sundays. But what I need y'all to understand is... When you raise your hand, if you know what the answer is, all you have to do is just raise your hand, and I will gladly give you something. Earth, earth, earth. The number of earth. So we can hand this back and send this back on that way. Let's see. Someone want to grab this? Oh, I'm going to just sit it right here. Thank you so much. The number four is the number of earth. Yes, yes, Lord. Material creation. Yes. It's one plus three equals the four. Yes. Because we know it's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, plus one is his creation. Yes. So how beautiful that the first four commandments are vertical. Mm -hmm. Y'all know it's ten, right? Mm -hmm. So guess what happens? If the first four 
commandments, when you read them, they are vertical. Yes. yes. Oh. And the last six sets forth the principles guiding Israel's relationship with the covenant community. Yes. And more broadly, with human family. Wow. So watch this. If it's 10, the first four is this way, the last six is this way. Yeah. That means when it says, thou shalt not bear false witness, uh -huh. thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not steal, mm -hmm. thou shalt not commit adultery, yeah. that's in the six, isn't it? Yeah. That's between your brethren. Amen. And watch this. What's the number six? Man. Man. Well, I was going to give you a card and raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> the number six is the number of man. Yes. So that means God created man on the sixth six day. Yes. How many pallbearers you have? Six. Wait a minute. How many feet are you buried in the ground? Six. All these sixes. How many days was you allowed to work? Six. six. So you see that the number six in the six commandments are between you and your brethren. Yes. You can't bear false witness against God. Amen. It says, honor the seven and keep that day holy. That's yep. up. Amen. Amen. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. That's right. See, the first four is this way. The last six is between you and I. Amen. Did y'all catch that? Y'all already knew that. I already told y'all that. <laughs> Listen, the last six commandments are horizontal between you and your neighbor. Amen. All of the commandments are principles governing the covenant relationships yes. and founded on the ultimate Old Testament statement of a relationship which stands in the introduction of the Ten Commandments. Amen. That's it. Amen. He says, I am Yahweh. Yes. Yep. Your God. Yes. Because Yahweh is. And is Israel's God both is and must become a certain and special people. Yeah. Even today. Yes. God wants us to be a special people that's set apart. Amen. Yes, We're supposed to be different from everybody else. Yeah. Amen. But it's interesting that we can be like a chameleon mm -hmm. at times and days and moments and services. That's true. That we can blend in. When we want to blend in and go over here, go over there, talk like them and talk like that and dress like this. Right. But it's interesting because over in 1 Peter 2 and 9, he says you are a chosen generation Amen. of a royal priesthood. Amen. So God was trying to model from Genesis to Malachi, I want a particular people. I want a particular church, but he was only concerned with his people at that time. Amen. Gentiles wasn't allowed in. Mm -hmm. That's why he came into his own and his own received him not. Yes. He gave them the first jump at becoming godly. Right. That was the first church in the Old Testament. Yes. yes. That's why he had so many strict rules. Amen. Well, Y'all know when you get to the book of Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. God gave the law again. Amen. That's why it's called Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. Yes. Well, I don't know how to sing, but if I was to sing by myself, that's a solo, right? right. Yes, yes, yes. Now, if I have my mother come up here, that's called a duet. Yes, right? yes. That means solo was Exodus 20 given the law. Yes. The book of Deuteronomy is a duet. Yes. I'm going to give you my law plus some more. Yes. <clears throat> you follow me? Yes. So that's why the book of Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. And there's some 467 laws in there. Yes. Right. Couldn't keep that? Did you not know if you walked to the temple a certain amount of miles, you would get stoned? <laughs> yeah. That means if you walk within a 30 mile zone, how do, you, how do you feel you coming to worship God and you get stoned when you get there? They're going to check your mileage. Let's see. You are 31 miles over. <laughs> get stoned. It was very strict. Mm. Some of you come distance today. We got people on social media. We got people on Zoom can stay in the privacy of their home or wherever they are and worship the Lord thy God. Oh, yes. And don't get in trouble. But isn't it interesting? 
that we traveled all up and down the highways all week long. We went places. We enjoyed ourselves. We even went to work. Watch this. Longer than an hour and a half. Okay. Okay now. You've been somewhere longer than an hour and a half. All right now. You've been to a movie. Yeah. The yeah. Bad Boys movie, I think it's two hours. Oh, yeah. But you mean to tell me we can't come to church? Uh-uh. Got something wrong. Did anyone remember the movie Titanic? How long was that? That was a four-hour movie. That was a part-time job, and I didn't get paid none. Isn't that something? You mean to tell me I can sit up in a movie for two hours, and I can't give God an hour of my time? Amen. Okay. You got to figure that math out yourself. I'm going to let you deal with that one. Okay. Amen. Oh, yes. All Israelites were to honor their parents because parents are God's representatives to their children in God's administrative role. Amen. Did you catch what I just said there? Your parenting is God's administrative role in your life is the next best thing to serving God. Yes. So you mean to tell me you know some parents that are not exemplifying mm -hmm. godly behavior, mm -hmm. partying with our children, yep. twerking with our children, mm -hmm. sad. going out with our children, firing up a blunt with our children, mm -hmm. drinking with our children. Oh no. You are the next best exemplified person present in their life in God's authoritative, orchestrative authority. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so the fifth commandment is the foundational to the commandments six through ten yes. as the first commandment is to the second to the fourth. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. Amen. The Israelites were to honor God because he had given them life. Amen. Just as much as he says, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days be long upon the land. Yes. God is saying, if you honor me, I'll give you life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But there's a prerequisite. Amen. You just didn't show up here in a UFO, right? Mm -hmm. You came through the womb of a woman to get here. Uh -huh. Amen. So she's part of the conduit of entrance. Yes. Uh, That's yeah. where the woman gets her name from. Yes. Woe. Man, the womb man, because she was created because she was taken out of man's side. Yes, she wasn't taken from his hand so he can hit her, she wasn't taken from his feet so he can step all over her, the bone wasn't taken from her, his mouth. So he can cuss her out and talk about her. Right. She was taken from his side. Hallelujah. Meaning she's supposed to help him. Thank you. His helpmate. Thank side you. by side. Thank and you. And when the two become one, that's in the eyesight of God Amen. that there's two present in the home to Amen. make it right. Amen. But even if the other party is not there, that means that mother. Got to yes. put in an extra dose yes. and an extra time to make the person of the presence of Jesus in her life Amen. to know, let her children know that there is a man in this house. Amen. 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 And that man is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You see, the Apostle Paul repeated this responsibility as binding on the church in Ephesians. Amen. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. But change the command to obey. I like how Paul did that. Amen. He removed out. He just said, I need y'all to obey. Amen. But I know that word obey is kind of hard to some folk to do, as well as the promise. Well, you know what we're going to do real quick? Let's look at these six callings mm -hmm. and gifts that God has bestowed upon the Father. If that's all right. Yes. Right. Number one, when we talk about the six callings and gifts 
that God has bestowed upon every father. Number one, the high calling of fatherhood. Yes, fatherhood is a noble high calling given by God. It's a role that demands patience, wisdom, and an unwavering love. Fathers are called to be protectors, providers, priests, teachers, and spiritual leaders in their households. But it's hard to find men who want to serve God now. Yes. All right, right. It's hard to find a man in Bible study. Yeah. It's hard to find men in church. All right. Why do you think there's always more women in churches than men? Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? That's just something to think about. God's place as men are to be the authoritative figure that God is trying to work through you to model Fatherhood. Yes, sir. At all times, just because you are a man, don't make you a man because you still might be men minded. You might be thinking you're a man, but you're still men minded. Your mind hasn't matured or grown into the area where God wants you to first pick up His word. Yes, sir. Yeah. How can you say you are the authoritative man and you don't read God's word? Yeah. Okay. How can you say you're a man and you don't study his word? How can you say you are a real man if we don't go to church That's true. or in a church? Yes, yes. Reading and studying the word, praying, fasting at times. You see, it's a lot to this that we have to realize the world shows you one way a man should be, but I believe the word of God shows you the yes. ultimate way. Yes. Yes. And it's your responsibility if you choose to accept it. Y'all remember y'all used to hear that in Mission Impossible? <laughs> Ethan Hunt would normally get a mission every time the episode comes on. Mm -hmm. It would be in unique areas, strange places, but all they know is a tape recorder. They'll click it on and it will let you know the mission. And as a man, after that mission is explained thoroughly to you, right. it always asks, are you going to choose to accept it or not? And what I love about the mission, the mission is not left for nobody else. It burns up and explodes because that mission was for you. Amen. All of us have different missions in life. Yes. We have different areas where we're moving because God deals with us each individually. Oh, yes. And if you choose to accept the mission, you will not you will not conquer the mission because you are missing the mission. Wow. Oh yes. That's why you're trying to find your way. You're trying to search. That's why you're over here. That's why you're over there. That's why you're into this. That's why you're into that. You are lost, my brother. And we must find the mission in the word of God. Amen. Now. Do not be found missing the mission that God gave you because Amen. you missed it. Amen. Listen. Yes. They are tasked with the responsibility to nurture their children's hearts, minds, guiding them in the ways of the Lord. Yes. This is so profound because... Each child that is entrusted to you, it's your responsibility to bring them up. They may not even know where they're at, Amen. but they can hear clapping. Amen. They can hear praises. Amen. They can hear a word. They don't know what's going on at this early stage. Yes. But there comes a point that they're going to get this place understood that God's house is is different than my house. Amen. God's house Amen. is different from the mall. Amen. God's house is different from the mall. God's house is different from the playground. Amen. God's house is different from the school. God's house is different from the college or All high right. school. All right. They don't know something different about this house Amen. versus any other house they enter into. Amen. Amen. Number two, the power of presence. Wow. One of the greatest gifts 
a father can give his children is his presence. All right. In a world that often pulls us in many directions, the simple act of being present physically, emotionally, yeah. and spiritually makes a profound impact. Yes, right, right. Your presence provides a sense of security. Amen. A belonging that no material possession can replace. Amen. When we're talking about your presence, this will be no greater time for a commercial. Okay. Okay now. Uh, let me let me let me try to help us out with a nice little commercial to show us dealing with your presence. Every this family looks really nice, but uh oh, look at that. Y'all catch it? He's looking like he's resting, but uh oh. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Let that marinate for a minute. I want y'all to see. This is what real fatherhood looks like. Mm -hmm. To just be present when we fall into danger and trouble in life. Yes. Family just sitting around and look at this. The little one is getting into something and just topples over and look at him. The father acts into action and reaches out with his right hand. The right hand. Yes, thank you. You can turn that on. I just want you to see what fatherhood presence looks like. Yes. The father is there. What if the father was in the restroom? What if the father was gone? What if the father is in another room watching TV? But he's just right there resting, but he felt a certain movement on the couch. And let me tell you today, God is the same exact way. Amen. When you, sell, when you fall into certain situations, you may have fell into a bad relationship, fell into a bad situationship, you fell into a bad friendship, you fell into something very bad. Mm -hmm. And God just felt you. Amen. That you were tumbling on down. Amen. But he reached out and caught you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what Thank he does today. You. He's Thank still you. catching us. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. When we get caught up. Thank you, Lord. Yes, that was the power of presence, number two. Number three, leading by example. Children learn more from what they see Amen. than what they are told. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. Children learn more from what they see yeah. than what they are told. That's true. You see, fathers, your actions speak volumes. When you walk in integrity, show kindness, and live out your faith, Yes. You are setting a powerful example for your children to follow. Oh yes. Oh yes. They are respecting you. They are watching you. They are learning how to navigate life's challenges and how to treat others with love and respect. Amen. Amen. As I stand here, my son Isaiah is 24 years old. Praise the Lord. He'll be 24 this year. Yes. He has not heard me say one cuss word. Amen. Amen now. Amen. Thank the Lord. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> what that does, that shows that that vocabulary is not tolerated. Amen. Amen now. What that shows is there's a way to show something. Yes. No matter what happens, even in the midst of an escalated situation, still didn't do it. Uh huh. When he was six, seven, eight, still didn't do it. He's grown now. Amen. Haven't heard it. Amen. You gotta try. To do better. Amen. Amen. Because what that does, I don't expect him to do it. Amen yeah. now. But it's okay. He's getting a little <coughs> older now. But I just wanted him to see whatever he has a child. All right now. 
I showed him how to do that. Hallelujah. Because in the drift of it, he can do what he want to do in the presence of his friends. Yeah. But I'm just showing you what I did. All right. I put in the extra, the extra mile on that thing. Amen. As they say, they put a little up into it. All right. Uh huh. I mean, it's not hard. It's easy. Guess what? When you got the Holy Ghost in your life, you can do it. Wow. Amen. Now. Amen. That's the only way you can do it. Amen. Now. What does it profit me to blast off with words of profanity? All right. Now. They always say this. I'm going to say it, whether you like it or not. When you want to blast off somebody and use profanity, that sounds like your, your vocabulary is subject to what you think you know. All right, now. You can't get it off another better way than that? All right. You think blasting somebody every time you get the ever opportunity, you think you can say anything you want to say to people? You can say what you need to say. Watch this. In a very nice tone. Amen now. See, your exposition of your delivery don't have nothing to do with your loud voice. Amen. You could be talking loud and ain't saying Amen. nothing. Amen. And then we find out just because you at this volume here, this person goes here, you think you're going somewhere, but guess what? Yeah. Your vocabulary is still the same and your loud volume thinking you saying something. All right. All right. You ain't saying nothing. All right. Yeah. Try, try it besides. But let me tell you this. That's a Holy Ghost thing. Yeah. Yes, it is. That is one bit of a Holy Ghost thing, whether you know it or not. Because watch this. Amen. You wasn't cussing that three year old, wasn't you? All right, uh, now. Oh, I know you weren't. Because this is something that comes along in life. All right. Is it necessary? No, you shouldn't do it, but it's okay. But some of us have cussed our own children out. Uh oh. They sure have. They sure have. <laughs> sure okay. Have. Now. It's okay. But what I'm saying is. We got to learn to get this thing together. Amen. And it's not too late. That's Amen. Right. It's not too late. Let me tell you something. That was just mail. I'm giving you mail. That wasn't from me. I didn't say this. That was God talking. So don't get mad at me. I'm a hot. Don't get mad at me. We got to lead by example. Fathers, your actions speak volumes. Amen. When you walk in integrity, show kindness, and live out your faith, Setting an example for your children to follow. Amen. They are watching you, sure. learning from you. Amen. To respect others. Uh oh. Amen. True. Number four. Encouraging and building up. It says in Ephesians chapter six verse four reminds us. Uh oh. Not to provoke your children to anger. Amen. Uh oh, this sounds like Paul is trying to let some parents know just because you got your authority, that don't mean you got to talk crazy right. mm -hmm. All right. to your children and get them upset at you because you're supposed to be doing it God's way. Amen. How many times we have gotten out of line and God don't cuss at us, not that I know of. Yeah. No. Right. The God you serve, does he get at you that way? No. No. Uh uh. He uses the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. to speak to us. Yes. Hallelujah. But Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 reminds us not to provoke our children to anger, but watch this, but to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Amen. This means encouraging them, building them up with positive words and guiding them with love and patience. Yes. Amen. Yes. Correction is necessary. But it should always be done with a heart of love, aiming to restore and strengthen, not to break down. Amen. Now, speaking of breaking, commercial for a minute. When we're talking about breaking, oh my goodness, I think this father meant business. Let's see what happens. I guess he told him to go empty the garbage or something, so he's on the video game, and I guess he wants to do this. Boom, boom, boom. When a real father asks you to do something and you decided to move when you wanted to, oh well. Because you can see he ready to get up and he ready to get out and go do it. He pushed it to the side and said, no, I got this. I mean business. Now, son, I think that's a PS5 he didn't mess up to. PS5. Go. Look at that. He means business. And the little the little bear on his uh shirt is showing you what he means. Shocking. They on that PS5 and 
Did you see when he got up ready to get up to go do what he asked him to do? He shoved him down. <laughs> Look, he comes in there. He ain't said a word. He ain't said nothing. He's just coming on in, sit down, have a seat. And he comes in with the sledgehammer. <laughs> but again, thank you so much. <laughs> you see, the role of number five is key. The role of a spiritual leader, uh-oh, I think I can marinate on this one for a minute. We do not have enough fathers yeah. that are walking with God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't. Yeah. And how do we expect to exemplify the ultimate picture of God the Father if the Father is not walking with the Father? Yes, that's right. Yes. The role of a spiritual leader as spiritual fathers Fathers have the unique opportunity to shape their children's faith. Amen. Amen. Lead your family in prayer. Yes. Read the Bible together. Yes. And make church a priority. Amen. Joshua said, for me and my house, we will. We will serve the Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. So it's kind of interesting that we can go all over the other places with our children. But we can avoid the church house. All right. wow. Okay. You know, sometimes it's okay. Listen, we got to show your children your faith. Amen. Show your children that faith is not just a part of life, but the foundation upon every else is built. Amen. Now, your children should know you mean business. Amen. They should know you serve the Lord. They should know and see you reading. Amen. Studying. Amen. They should be able to understand this is what my parents are about. Yes, sir. Instead of showing them other things. All right. All right. Yes. We have to embrace the spiritual aspect of the foundation. You see, your relationship with God will inspire and guide your children in their own faith journeys. Amen now. That's, true. That's part of showing them the early steps. Yeah. That's why it says in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the ways he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from Amen. it. Amen. Amen. You see, she showed me the way, but I wasn't even trying to hear it, though. Amen. 22 on down, I was all in the other kind of stuff. As y'all know, I only went to church three times out of the year. Yeah, don't get tired. I'm going to say it over and over again. <laughs> Yeah, see, sometimes we could be here, but sometimes if your spirit don't want to be here, it's very easily noticed. All right. Because you got to remember, Mormon is not talking. All right. yes. This is God talking through me. Yes. Right. yes. And I can testify if it's all right. All right. Yes. Everybody else get to testify. <laughs> so I think I should be able to testify if it's all right. Well, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a sip on that if that's all right. <laughs> all right, go ahead. You see, I only went to church three times. Yeah. That's a lot because I didn't go like some of y'all went. Yeah. Now watch this. Why were you going? Do we see the effects of it today? We got to understand something. I'm speaking personally. So if my little three times was more than your times, how about that? Yeah. Because again, I only went on Christmas, which was a pagan holiday. Easter was a pagan holiday. And Mother's Day. So it's Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. That's a CME Christian. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would get my little outfits together on these days, not realizing I'm only going to be in there for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> See, I had to learn. I had to learn this thing for myself. Right. But she showed me. She tried to get me to go. I didn't want to do it. Uh, yes. She tried. Margaret, get, no, 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 I'll, I'll go one day, Mama. I told God. I didn't tell her. I told God, I'm going to go when I get 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 22 years old talking crazy like that. I'm going to just go when I get about 30 years old, like I'm going to wait until my 30th birthday, I'm going to start going to church. God say, you know what? Let me fix your little red wagon with the blue ties on it. Right. He changed that around at the age of 23. Amen now. A lot of my friends didn't understand what I was doing. Thank you, Lord. A young man this young. Thank you. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was over here. I was over there. I was with all these different people. 
Yes, sir. But God said enough is enough. Amen. Because I got something for you to do. Amen. You didn't know that I had your whole life mapped out for you. You didn't know. This is a part Thank of you, the Lord. spiritual journey. Thank you, Jesus. You deposited stuff into me that I didn't even know what I was doing. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. But it came abroad a little later on. Yes, sir. And it happened April 18, 1993. Thank you, Jesus. And ever since then, it's been totally different. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think this might be another commercial moment, I think. Let me just uh, work with this one for a second. I think right. this is because, yeah, that's it. What this is showing, you see as the clock rolls around, she was a little girl. But his presence was there showing her the ways of God until she got older. Yes. As time elapses in our lives, I don't care what age your child is, they may be an old adult you still can go back and make up this time like this. You see, as God the Father is with us through our lives, yes. from the beginning to the end, a father should be the same. Amen now. All right. Amen. Now, this is the only time I'm going to mess with y'all. You may need to do a daylight savings time with your children. All right. You may need to bring the clock back one hour. To go get him, go get her, and make up for that lost time. Thank you so much. All right. Number six, and we done. Just what? Number six is the last one. Well, y'all know I'm going to have to deal with some negative perspectives. All right. Embracing imperfections. Right. Here we go. No father is perfect. I know I'm not. I'm not trying to be perfect, but there's something perfect in me, though. His Holy Spirit is something perfect in me because I know I'm not, and I'm try trying to be, and I can't be. Amen. But the Holy Ghost Amen. is the perfecter. Amen. He's the paraclete. Yes. When I make mistakes, Amen. he's able to clean up my mistakes like baptism. Amen. That's true. That's true. He's the quicker picker-upper. Right. Yes, he is. I make spills and all kind of stuff, but he cleans up good. Yes. No father is perfect. There will be mistakes and moments of failure. Amen. But even in these times, there is something called grace. Amen. Embrace your imperfections. Seek forgiveness when needed. And strive to grow. Your willingness to acknowledge your shortcomings and work on them teaches your children valuable lessons of humility and resilience. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate perfecter within every father. Amen. Amen. But that father needs to know that he's there. Yeah. Amen. You have to want him there in your life to perfect you. Yeah. Amen. Now, speaking on imperfections, this is another good moment for a commercial. You see, okay. let me try to help y'all when we're done and we're going to have a good day in the Lord because these are examples of fathers that are imperfect and I'm not sure what he's doing <laughs> and why he's doing this. Oh, you see, oh, no. when you think a father is supposed to protect you from hurt, harm, and danger and endangers the family. Damn. What's sad about this? <laughs> His head didn't even hit the ground. The baby's head hit the impact and he didn't. Only thing flew off was his hat. I need to understand why are we taking our children to a skate park and she's no bigger than a skateboard? Now, we take our children to the most strange places. Instead of taking them to church, and hey, guess man, what? Y'all know I got one more. Let's keep it rolling. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm that's saying. another follow. Well, here's another one. Hmm. Now, y'all, let's see what's going on here. Okay. We talking about fatherhood today, right? Oh. Oh. Let's break this oh. down. 
She gets on it and give it gas, and oh boy, he just walks off to do what? Just when you think your father is washing over you, you rather smoke and still be unworried about the ball. That's what he did. You see, he walks off, reaches in his pocket for his life because he want to fire up and blaze. Then you see after the fall, wow. he didn't run no. to go deal with her. He just like, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> look at that. He blazed. He got his cigarette in his hand. And look, she takes off. And boom, look, he just walks over like nonchalant. This is showing fatherhood is not to be taken for granted. <laughs> We have so many fathers that fail like this guy here. You mean to tell me he wanted to fire up a cigarette in a moment like this? I'm so glad that God watches over me. Hallelujah. Even when I'm resting. Amen. When I'm on the highway. Amen. When I'm on park. <laughs> when I'm somewhere where I need his protection at all times. I don't have to worry about God doing nothing. Amen. But watch it over me. Amen. 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 Well, guess what? Thank you, Jesus. In conclusion, to all fathers present, whether on Facebook or on Zoom today, we must know that your role is invaluable. Amen. You are appreciated, you are loved. And you are needed today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Your Thank efforts, you. Thank you, Lord. though sometimes unseen, have lasting impacts. Yes, it does. Continue to seek God's guidance Amen. and strength as you fulfill the noble calling. May you be blessed with wisdom, patience, and the abundance of his love. And I think I would be amiss if I don't send all of us out of this entire room and sanctuary on social media and so with one last image. This is so beautiful because when I found this, I said, I couldn't believe what you're about to see. Yes. This is something amazing. Look at this. This reminded me of so much what God does for us because I'm going to break this down slowly. There's a little bitty cat. The father cat goes up and brings the, the other, her, the baby cat there. And as the other one slides down, and look what he does. The father comes and gets that one. Yes. Brings them back up. Oh, man. Yeah, he you see, when a father is present for his children, just like God, he can catch you from sliding down Amen. into bad situations. Amen. Amen. And on today, I know I've slid into many bad situations. Yes, yeah. But God is just like this father cat. I didn't slid down so many times. And I know you can see yourself yep. when you've been sliding into some stuff, but God yep. still comes yeah. and works overtime. Yeah. Everlasting. Yeah. Every time. And what I like about this, that's a picture of his brother. Amen. Yep. So this father, watch this, is not showing favoritism. Amen. Because you got some parents that will probably go get one and won't go get the other. Oh, yes, you got to show fatherhood to love your children equally because we see that and we learn about that in Genesis chapter 37 now. We learn about how Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, looked after the son. Joseph made him a coat of many colors. Yeah. Didn't give him a job, but all the other 11 brothers are out there working in the field taking the sheep. But Joseph couldn't work because he all decked out. Yeah. He dressed with a nice coat of many colors. And right. it was interesting because the father made his coat so long that his sleeves covered his arms. <laughs> which meant, I don't want you to touch nothing. 
Y'all didn't catch that. When you understand the story of Joseph, his father makes him a coat of many colors. And y'all know colors mean things symbolically. I don't have time to do all of that. But each color has a representation in the clothes that Joseph wore. Yes. Amen. Joseph was sent to go spy on his brothers. I just inserted that to let you see when parents play favoritism, it messes a big situation up in a family. Yeah. Right. But this father cat simultaneously was working 24-7 getting his children when they were sliding down before they could hit rock bottom, he was right there yeah. on time and had enough time to go get the other. And as I'm going up, the other one going out. <laughs> We have a lot of families where one is coming in, one is going back and forth, but that father is there for his children. Let's give God some praise for that. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. And love y'all so much. Well, let us have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the fathers. Thank Lord, you, Jesus. Who are with us in this sanctuary. Thank you, Lord. And online today. Yes, Lord. We ask that you bless them abundantly. Yes, Lord. Give them the strength to persevere. Yes. The wisdom to lead. The wisdom to love and nurture their families. Yes, Lord. Help them to be the men that you have called them to be. Father, enable them to be the priest, the provider, and protector in and out of their home. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray amen. 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 As we realize and reflect today that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He obeyed his father. When the father asked his son, can you go save the people from their sins? Yes, Lord. Jesus said, Father, I'll go. Amen. And he came in like manner. He came down and was born to the father of a carpenter. Yes to these earthly parents he demonstrated obedience show me a man who knew his parents before he arrived amen. that's Jesus amen show me a man who orchestrated his life pattern through 42 generations to arrive safe and sound and they raised him to the best of his ability Yes, Lord. But I know one thing. When they found him, and actually they left him three days out, but they turned around and had to head back to Jerusalem to find their son, Jesus, at the temple teaching, confounding those who were scribes, yes. Pharisees, in a way that it was time for him to transition to do the will of the Father. Yes, they said, Jesus, we came back because we forgot you. He said, not mother, but he addressed her as woman. I must be about my father's business. Amen. And I'm asking every father today, we need to be about our father's business. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. To be about it diligently. Yes, Lord. To start in our homes first, then go to the uttermost parts of the world second. But as Jesus was betrayed by one of the twelve he chose, but Jesus chose Judas for that assignment. Amen. Yes. He chose him strictly to betray him. So what is the utility of being used for negativity? <laughs> but God will get the best Amen. out of you whether you're doing wrong or right Yes, Lord. because you must acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path Amen. Now, 
So when he betrayed the son of man with a kiss, he was arrested. Then led off to be judged by the Sanhedrin council. He was led from Herod to Pilate back and forth. He makes it back to Pilate. Pilate says, I don't see anything wrong with this man. So Pilate says, I'm going to wash my hands with this. I'm going to let y'all handle this and decide. Pilate asks them, do you want Barabbas to be released or Jesus of Nazareth believe? They chose Barabbas because they thought Jesus was here for a political agenda to stop them from the oppressions of Rome. But Jesus said, my kingdom is not here. Amen. My kingdom is with the Father. Amen. And he says, I am the kingdom of God. Right. And I want to show you a better way to do things. So when they put a bag over his head and hit him and said, prophesy, who hit you? He endured that so you can be the father that he wants you to be. Amen. They beat him all day and night with a scourge. He endured that sufferings uh -huh. so you can be the father that he wants you to be. They gave him an old rugged cross to be dragged through the streets of Jerusalem to the outside hill of a place called Calvary. He was ridiculed, he was spit on, he was talked about, disliked. Yes. He was sneered at. Yes. As he walked through the Via Della Rosa, which is the way of suffering, as he made it to the hill, they stretched him back on an old rugged really cross. They drove one nail into his right wrist, they drove another nail into his left wrist, and another nail into his feet. God is a good mathematician because he said three nails plus one cross equals forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Yes. Isn't that something? Out of three years, they finally listened to him. Yeah. He was teaching, preaching, helping the sick. He said, if I be lifted up, Guess what they did? They lifted him up there. And he said, I'll draw all men unto me. That's why he's drawing all of you on Facebook. He's drawing all of you on Zoom. And he's drawing all Thank of you Lord. here today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. He says, Father, I can't do this anymore. And that's when he says, it is finished. He gave up the ghost. Yeah. He hung his head into the locks of his shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he died. Yes, yes Lord. Amen. Yes. As it says, that's love. Amen. That's love. But as that's Joseph love. of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they took him down. They placed him in an old borrowed tomb that belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. And Jesus stayed there all day Friday. Hallelujah. They always say, what's so good about that Friday? Good Friday. Because that was the end of the new beginning. Yes, Lord. Where we all can experience salvation. Hallelujah. He stayed there all day Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. But something spectacular, something amazing, Hallelujah. something of enlightenment, yes, something joyful happened yes, early Sunday morning. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead with all power, all in heaven and on earth. Amen. He got up Amen. with all glory. Amen. And he still lives. Amen. And the same Jesus who rose from the dead, he's coming back again. Amen. And he wants to make sure, will you be ready? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Will you be ready? Yes. Jesus is so amazing because I've never seen any human being do this. People borrow a lot of stuff from y'all, right? People borrow purses, shoes, hats, gloves, gas money. People want to get cashed out stuff. But let me show you a man who borrowed a burial grave and gave it back yeah. on time with eternal interest. 
You see, Joseph of Arimathea actually did use that tomb. He wouldn't have been able to use it if Jesus was still in it. But Jesus lives. It was empty. Amen. You can go on to Jerusalem today. It's still empty. But many who came before him are founders of different denominations. Founders of different cults. Different religions. They are still in their grave. But there's one grave today empty over in Jerusalem and Israel. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, he still lives. Let's give God some praise. Again, a lot of the fathers wasn't present when we did this early, but can we get every father to stand up in the presence of God today? someone in this room who do not know Jesus Christ as your personal and Savior and you have never accepted Christ all you have to do is just raise your hand and if there's someone in this room today and if you are here and you would like to make one way assembly your church home all you have to do is just raise your hand you say Lord I've been searching over here and there and I just don't understand <laughs> I need to be somewhere where the word is being taught, preached, and I'm coming in one way and leaving out another. And if you find yourself, if that's you, all you do is just raise your hand. And Lord, we have done as the Lord has commanded us to do. Let us bring forth the Lord's Supper. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you so much yes. thank you, Lord. for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard today. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this Father's Day. We thank you for being our ultimate high Father, Amen. Jehovah El Yon, the Most High God. Yes. But Lord, yes, at this Lord. moment, we just thank you for your word that was encouraging to us as fathers, and it was encouraging to all of us. In yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. But Father, again, we thank you so much. Thank but at this moment, Lord, we ask that you will forgive us for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. Yes. Amen. Remove anything that's not right within our heart, spirit, yes, mind, and our soul. Lord, if we looked at someone, said something, or thought something inappropriately, forgive us for that. Lord, forgive us for any unconfessed sin today. Yes. Lord, forgive us for all of our yes, sins Lord. of omission and our sins yes, of commission. Lord, cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Yes, Lord. Lord, even though our sins may be red like crimson stain, we know your blood is so powerful and enabled to wash our sins and make them white against you. Yes, Lord. Lord, as your people receive these sacraments, as they receive the symbolicness of the bread that represents your body, which is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is exemplified in your Jews. Yes. We thank you and we praise you as your people receive the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray, Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we hold this bread, it is symbolic of the Lord Jesus Christ's body. When he broke the bread, he distributed it. And he says, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering until I come again. He said, take ye all of it and eat. And they all did eat. Lord, we did this not for the nourishment of these mortal ones, but we did this for the nourishment of the soul. And as we hold the fruit of the vine, when Jesus poured it, he said, this is my shedded blood that was given as a ransom for you. Is it a true testament that it was given for the Old Testament, I mean for the New Testament and for the New Covenant? He said, do this in remembrance of me and show forth my death and suffering till I come again. He said, drink ye all of it. And they all did drink. Mm -hmm. Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for the mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. And at this moment, many who like to participate and support us from a distance and from afar, whether you're on Zoom and social media, we have three platforms where you can help us give to the Lord. And we have Givelify, where you find us as One Way Assembly. And on Zelle, we are found at 510-417-8000 and through Cash App and as MD Saucer. These are three methods of giving. Whatever you choose, you wish. We thank you so much for your contributions to help us build and edify the kingdom of God. Amen. And again, again, I thank you all so much. Love you, you so pass. much. Amen. Seeing all of your faces, family, friends, visitors. Thank y'all so much. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, Mama. Good to see you today. Yeah. Mama, so much in the house. I thank you all. I love you so much. And again, I wish every father on the face of this earth happy Father's Day because that title doesn't belong to all fathers. Amen. 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 We thank you for those who are demonstrating and exemplifying pure fatherhood to the utmost. Amen. Amen. Again, I thank y'all so much. Y'all looking good. Y'all smelling good. <laughs> Thank y'all so much on Zoom. Thank y'all so much on Facebook. Love y'all. Let us all stand and be dismissed. Amen. Give us a good praying up out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. Thank you so much, big sis. All right. Well, again, we don't have to stand yet, Mark. Okay. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Yes. Thank you. We thank you that we will carry this message as fathers. Yes, Lord. To allow us to do better. Yes, Lord. To be present. Yes, sir. To be a protector, provider in all shape, forms, or fashion. Lord, as we depart from this place but not your sight, give us traveling grace, Lord. Be with us throughout this day and let us enjoy this day as fathers and all women and men of God. We thank you so much. Amen. We ask these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 All right.